whatever you may be dealing with, whatever you're dealing with, we come to release the sound of hope, the, the sound of joy, the sound of freedom into your home. So as we worship, we want you to feel free to stand up in your in your living rooms and gather your children and gather your families around the computer, around the phone, and let's go into the presence of God. We won't let this situation and this uncertain time stop our praise and stop our worship. So, Father, we thank you in this moment, and we open our mouths and we give you praise. We give you glory from the rising of the sun to the setting down of the same. Your name is worthy to be praised. So, Father, we exalt you this morning. We give you glory. We give you honor. Even when we don't understand what's going on, our praise is still going to match the goodness of our Savior. So it's in this moment we lift our hands and we open our mouths, not concerned about tomorrow, not concerned about next week, not concerned about the reports, but we are completely focused on you. And our presence in this room is going to be evidence that you are good and you are great and you are worthy to be praised. So we give you praise this morning. We give you glory in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. In your homes, can you put your hands together and give our God the greatest sound of praise that you can? Come on, put your hands on it. Come on.
the show it. Come on, put your dance in the atmosphere. Hey, say it ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party, cause the Holy Ghost party won't stop. You sit. focus on you, oh God. Yeah. You're awesome, Jesus. You're faithful, God. And we love you today, oh God. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness You have- 
Of the goodness of God. One more time. All my life you have been faithful. And you're not gonna fail me now. All my life you have been so. Come on, say with every breath. I will say. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down, no. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down.
I pray, God, that they will receive that you are still good, 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 that you are still good. Despite what it looks like, despite of what we're hearing, despite of what we're seeing, thank God that you are so good. So, Father, as we honor you and as we give you reverence above everything, by faith and by our heart's desire, God, we give this service unto you. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will go into every home, you will go into every car, that you will connect to every phone that is watching this service online. And that you will begin to renew the right spirit into your children. That you begin to renew the right spirit into the families. That you begin to renew, renew the right spirit into those that feel like that they are disconnected to you in this season. But because they are connected to this online service here at TKC, I thank you, God, that it's beginning to change in their favor. That everything that begins to cause fear, God, you're beginning to deposit peace in the midst. So Holy Spirit, we thank you for being present. We thank you for stirring up the atmosphere in every home, in every space, in every environment that is watching at this moment. Touch every city, every state, every nation. God, we declare that you are good and that we will remain confident in this because you are good. And if you believe and you're watching this and you know that God has been good to you and God is still good to you, clap your hands right where you are and begin to declare it unto him because he is good in your home, in your car, wherever you are, God is still good. Clap your hands, all you people. Lift up your voice. Lift up the sound right there where you are and give God praise and give God praise and give God praise because he is still good. He is still good. He is still good. We thank you, Lord. He is still good. Yes, we have so much to be thankful for. Just the fact that we're living and we're breathing and we can call upon the name of Jesus no matter what circumstance or situation. Let us be thankful this morning. We are thankful for you, TKC Live, for tuning in. We are thankful that God tells us not to be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and supplication to make our requests known to him. And he is with us, for the Lord is near. And that was in my heart this morning when I woke up that God is with us. We are not to be afraid. We are not to be weary about anything. So I am so grateful to be here. I am grateful that you are tuning in at TKC Live. Amen for that. Where we are called to follow God, to love people, and change the city. Amen. So I just want to greet you on behalf of just myself, Lady Karen, and the TKC family, welcome to our service. Welcome any first-time guests that may be tuning in. We love you and we appreciate you. Amen. What an awesome opportunity we have to share this word via live stream today was supposed to be on our calendar, our grand opening. And it's so true what James says that we make our own plans, but God at the end of them has to sign off on them. And so we are here in our first service live with nine members in a brand new space. But we're so glad that you're able to join us online and we're gonna have an amazing word and we thank God for you tuning in. Let's clap it up. Thank you so much for an amazing, incredible, incredible, incredible opportunity. Listen, I want to do this at the top of our message. You know that we're not physically together, but share this at 5 p.m. Our YouTube page will have the message. 
so that we can push it through to all of you who are on our text list so that we can send you the message and you can send it to your friends, loved ones, family, those who are not on the social media stage. But I'm asking you right now as you are watching us to help with the work. We're not here. We can't pass a bucket to you physically, but spiritually we can still do it collectively together via the means that are in the comment section. So you can cash out TKCI like normally many of you do, or you can text 77977. The message word is TKCI and the amount that you're giving. As you can see uh, on the stage, we put this together this weekend to get prepared for this morning as they did an audible with the CDC. So we are in the phase of renovating and doing a lot of things. And then even in this moment, just as we are trusting God, so should you. And this is your opportunity to show God that you will trust him even in the midst of the days that we're living in. The beautiful thing of scripture is this, that God gives us seasons to prove do we really believe what we've been teaching and preaching and what we've been confessing. And if we believe that God is our source, which the world today can acknowledge that resources can come and go, but only God is our source. And so today, I'm encouraging you, let's get our phones out, let's text, you can text 407-456-8555, your number that you're giving, you can do that via text at 407 456 8555 or you can cash app whichever means you use or you can do the old school way you can mail it but we don't even really know our full mailing address yet so let's go online and do it let's be a part of the online giving process text right now in your phone I'm, I'm going to join you because I believe that's what God asked us to do is to sow seed and I'm going to do it the easy way using my good old faithful text messaging technology is a beautiful thing we're going to do it today together I'm sending it right now just like you I got some deals that I need to close and I got to trust God to get them to close and so we all in the situation we trust in God with what we have all the increase that we have we must honor the Lord with it if you have our app, you can do it through our apps. Good time to get TKC app. Yes, it is. So I'm doing it right now. I'm giving my gift through our app, our church app, the Kingdom, Kingdom Church Church app. All right. Turn with me if you're in your pajamas, if you got your bonnet cap on, it's all good. We can't see you in Jesus' name, amen. Didn't even get to glue your eyelashes on. And some of us got dressed this morning, ready for the house of God this morning. Listen, this space is a beautiful space. Uh, one of the good things the virus has done, if there is such a thing that we can say is good about that, is that it has caused us to do things that we typically would not do, which is like going outside in your backyard, riding your bike, talking to your neighbors. Hey, I've been living here for years, never even know you were here. What's your name? And so it's given us an opportunity to do that. And so I want you to look at your scripture right now. I'm going to read two verses. I'm going to read Philippians chapter number four. Um, which is an interesting passage of scripture and Exodus chapter number 12. Exodus 12 says this, there, there's, there's a death angel coming, there's a plague happening. And, and the children of Israel are, are told there, there's, a, there's a plague that's happening. It's, 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 a, it's a virus of some sense. Uh, it's coming and, and God tells them, um, what I want you to do is, is to stay in the house. It, it's kind of what the governor has told us to do. Stay, stay in the house. You, you got a curfew. 
And, and, and he says, but when I see the blood, I'll, I'll pass over. And so the message is I'm communicating today with, with a host of other churches under our pastor, Dr. Ari Vernon, is this title, Stay in the House. But I, I want to subtitle this, the, the, the virus called anxiety. Philippians chapter number four says this, verse number six. It says, do not be anxious about anything. And my wife quoted that. She didn't know I was preaching that. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. Somebody say everything. everything. Scream it. Your neighbors can't hear you. Say everything. everything. By prayer. We got nine people in here. Just CDC if you're watching. By, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. There is a virus that's an enemy to us. It's, it's different, but similar warfare we have seen throughout history. It's invisible, but it's powerful. It's a warfare you can't necessarily hear it, but you can see the effects of it. Oh, oh this virus is, is easy to spread. And we are not strangers to this virus. This virus can isolate even the best of them, leaving you tossing and turning at night or even waking up in a heap of sweat. Th this virus is so powerful that even though you've never felt it, even though you've never touched it, it can transform your mood and how you see the future. Uh, oh, this virus has been around even in the Old Testament. There were seasons where people had to run into their homes because there was a plague coming out and God tells them, what I need you to do is no matter what's happening around you, I need you to stay in the house. But not, not just the plague that was in Exodus, not just the plague that is bothering us today in our culture called this COVID-19 coronavirus or in the hood we call it the Rona. This virus is called anxiety. And Paul writes Philippians, and you got to know how Paul is writing because when Paul writes in Philippians chapter number four, Paul is in prison. He's in chains. He's not like it is in 33rd. He's shackled up. He is in chains. He is in bondage. And there are rat feces all around him. And there are all different types of things happening in Philippians chapter number four that you don't get to see the backdrop of. And even in that moment where there is pee and there's no sanitation, there's no place to use the restroom, Paul has to use the restroom that is there. And he writes to us. Be anxious for nothing. Anxiety is a feeling of worry or nervousness or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. You know how it is right now. You got to protect your peace. If you're watching the news, you got to protect your peace. Even as you're watching online, you got to watch out for everybody who heard from someone who works for the government who's told them this is what's going to happen. You got to protect your peace because anxiety will make you afraid of something you've never seen and make you feel like it's about to come even though it hasn't come. Anxiety is a powerful thing. It'll make you wake up wondering what's going to happen to you even though nothing has ever even happened. Anxiety is a feeling of worry, a nervousness, or an unease, or something with an uncertain outcome. Anxiety is a universal human malady that strikes when we find ourselves at the crossroads of choice making, equipped with several hefty wagon loads of thoughts of responsibility. You know what it is. You're, you're right there on your couch wondering, are they going to email me and tell me my hours are cut? Are they going to shut down my job? Am I going to be the one that they tap on the shoulder and say, it's time for you to pack up? How am I going to make these bills happen? And God says, I want you to be anxious for nothing. Anxiety is, is different than fear. Fear is an emotional response to a real, perceived, immediate danger. Fear is like the dog running at you right now, and you're afraid. 
But anxiety is, what if? It's not even there, but it's projected in your mind. And Paul looks at the church of Philippi in prison, in chains and shackles, and he is finding himself with no AC in the Philippian jail because they didn't have central air. And he's writing with rats all around him, and he's writing with poop all around him, and he's writing and saying, be anxious for nothing. Even if I don't know what's going to happen to me. It is the famous verse that we all write in verse 13. I can do all things through Christ. You do know that was written from a prison in Philippi. Anxiety is caused by four different things. An emotional response to something perceived. There's future threat going to happen. There's future threat going to happen. Number two, it's, it's also caused by sinful acts such as doing drugs make you have anxiety you start to panic and wonder what's going to take place number three is clinical some people suffer clinically from anxiety they just can't stop worrying and then there's the fourth type it's a sinful response to God's providential care this anxiety results because we do not trust that God will be good even when times are bad. Now, now, if you're number one, you got the, the anxiety because of a perceived threat. Maybe number two, you got so much anxiety, it's moved you to start drinking. It's moved you to start smoking. And now everybody's doing this shot challenge. You got to be careful of what you open yourself up to in times of anxiety because all Satan is looking for is an open door to take advantage of your anxiety. And God says, in your anxiety, what I need you to do is I need you to give no care to it and everything. Throw it on to prayer. He says this, we may feel at times fretful because of all the stresses and distresses that are happening, but God says, I'm not ignoring that they're not problems. I'm simply saying that when you do have anxiety, give it to me in exchange. The exchange is when anxiety comes upon you, throw it to me. And when you throw me anxiety, I'll throw you my peace. When you throw me anxiety, I'll throw you my joy. When you throw, if I had a basketball, I would throw it back and forth. When you throw me your heartache, I will throw you my comfort. When anxiety comes upon you, I don't want you to carry it because you weren't designed to carry it. You weren't made to carry it. But I want you to know that when anxiety comes upon you, you need to throw it back to me so that I can give you every part of me. He says, exchange anxiety for my peace. He says, Paul says something very interesting. He says, find goodness even in imperfection. Because you got to find goodness in imperfection. Because here's, here's something that we learned through this virus. We learned that you can't trust in silver and gold. We learned that you can't trust in your employer. We learned that one day every knee will bow. Even the most powerful organizations have had to bow and they're all trying to figure out, Lord, how is this going? And Lord, what are you going to do? Why? Because we got to find the good in the imperfection. Anxiety, write this down, tweet it, Instagram it, whatever. Anxiety is the fight to choose what's good or worry about reaching out to the goodness of God. You could either fight on what's going to happen or you could lean on the goodness of God. You can fight on what you think will happen or you can lean on the goodness of God. Anxiety is interesting because it is a healthy part of anxiety that lets us know that we're not going to be here forever. It's in this moment that more people are starting to say, you know what, I, I think I need to hear a little bit more about heaven now. I need to hear a little bit more about heaven or hell for all of us who are going to heaven. We need to hear more about heaven because we need to realize that this isn't our home. This is a home full of sickness. It's a home full of disease. It's a home full of poverty. I need a home that eradicates all of that and the only place there is home is heaven. 
in anxiety, we must entrust to God the things we can't control. You, you planned out a grand open celebration and you're thinking that it's going to happen today. And God's like, no, it's not going to happen today. But at some point, you got to say, Lord, not my will. But man writes their plans, but God has the final say to man's plans. So here's what we need to do. We need to substitute prayer. We need to substitute worry with prayer. And it'd be insensitive to ask you not to worry. It's easy to say, trust, trust in the Lord, he'll make a way. But pastor, I just lost my job and I got two kids that now have to stay home and I don't know how child care is going to work out. Or maybe I got kids at home and I got to go to work and I don't even know how they're going to learn. Are they going to fall behind in their education? Are they going to go to the next grade and not be equipped? They're, these are real situations and anybody who minimizes it is not being authentic to themselves. I don't know if the grocery stores are going to close. I don't know if I have enough food to make it. I don't, I don't even know how we're going to make it happen because I was told that they're going to give us a pink slip in two weeks. Or maybe you might be sitting on your couch and saying, Rev, I hear you, but I, I was the one that was laid off. I, it was me. I was, I was the one. Now, tomorrow, I got to wake up early and go fill out unemployment and hope that it goes through. I want to tell you what the scriptures tell you. Even in this moment, exchange your worry for God's peace. You worrying about it ain't going to add another day to your life. You concerned about it is going to add another moment to your life. But Paul says in everything that you do, verse 6, he says, by prayer, supplication, don't, don't be anxious about anything. And in everything, anxieties we face are, they're, they're just battles to fight us against the promises of God. Well, I know some of you are claiming this 2020 is, is, is going to be my, I'm going to get this done, I'm going to get this done. My question to you is, can you still hold on when it seems like your grip is slipping? Can you still believe when it looks like everything that you claimed and everything that you wrote on your vision board or on your dream board is not going to come to pass? Or will you still hold on and say that I don't know how God's going to do it, but I believe God has a way of doing things when we least expect. I don't, I don't even know how God's going to open the door, but I know God has a way of sending help in seasons that we don't even understand. I'm not saying God caused the virus. But I sure am saying God can use it. Some of you weren't able to buy a house a day in your life and now the prices have come down to where you came. Some of you have been so busy you haven't had time to work on your own vision and now God shut everything down and said, can you stop building everybody else's dream and start working on yours? Maybe anxiety has come in this season to get you to start having real relationship with God. Now that God has stripped away everything that we find pleasure in as opposed to watching all of these individuals that are having a word, maybe God's like, I want you to turn and find the word for your life so that you can no longer have anxiety but have peace and I want to close because I know watching online our attention spans are real short exchange your anxiety there, there's an old song it's a real old song I'm not going to sing because we're not mixed well I don't know my mic is mixed <laughs> it's an old song it says we do not carry everything to God in prayer some of the burdens we often forfeit because we don't take everything you've taken it online you taking it to your cousins. Take it to God in prayer. 
Father, I thank you for your people. That there's no distance that can separate us. So Holy Spirit, we want to carry everything to God in prayer. I can't wait on a pastor. I can't wait on a priest. I can't wait on a deacon. I can't wait on an evangelist, but I can go to you myself. So Holy Spirit, we take ourselves in the secret place of the Most High God and hide under the shadow of the Almighty. Give your children peace. Give them rest. Let them know that you are with them, that you care for them. You will look after them. And Holy Spirit, thank you for those that have joined us. May their faith increase more and more.